Hey everybody, it's Seth with Jensen USA and today I'm going to talk to you about effective top tube lengths. So today we're looking at effective top tube. You've probably heard this term thrown around in the bike industry and when you were going to look at bikes or maybe somebody was talking about how your bike fit. Um, and often we throw this term around in the bike industry but we don't actually explain what it means. So let's look at what effective top tube is, how to find it, and why it's important to you. So the first thing we want to know is what actual top tube length is. The top tube is this part that goes across your bike here. Um, when you're looking at this, if you were to measure this tube, that's going to give you the actual top tube length. And that tube can vary based on the uh, orientation of that tube. So for me here, I have a nice, fairly close to level top tube um, that's going to give me a pretty precise measurement of how this frame fits me. Now, I know for a fact that this bike is a 54. Um, this is my personal bike and I picked it out because it was a 54 and that's a size that I know I'm very comfortable with. Um, so let's take a quick look at how I would measure this actual top tube and then I'll show you from there how you measure your effective top tube. So let's take a look here. If I measure this out, what I'm gonna do is take my tape measure here and I'm gonna put it right on the center of my steer tube and then I want to walk it back and keep it nice and level across the top tube here. Okay, so I'm following the line of the top tube and that is 54, just like we thought it would be. Now, I knew that number off the top of my head, but if you were to look at this frame and you saw the marker on here, it says medium. Um, medium doesn't tell us much because from manufacturer to manufacturer, that could be a different measurement. So we really want to look at what the actual and effective top tube lengths are. So we found the actual top tube length of this. Now the likelihood is for this bike that the actual and the effective are going to be very similar lengths. And the reason that is, is because my top tube is nice and level. With a level top tube, that gives you basically the same measurement that you're looking for with effective. Now, here's where that difference lies. If your top tube slopes down and is maybe better for a lower standover height, or maybe it's designed for dealing with linkage, or maybe it's just an aesthetics pleasing sort of situation, um, you're gonna have a different actual top tube length versus your effective. So let's see what happens if this top tube wasn't level like it is. So here we're at 54, like we said before, but let's say that I take it and I'm still at center here, and let's say I moved that top tube down. Now, if it were to terminate here on my seat post, I'm actually looking at 52.5 uh, centimeters. Now, that is not the actual length across from here to here that this bike is, because we saw that that's a 54. So if you have a sloping seat tube, your actual top tube length will be a pretty inaccurate measurement of what size bike you're riding or what size bike you need to ride. So what we really wanna look at is effective top tube. The idea of effective top tube is no matter where your top tube actually is, whether it's down here or up here, is if you took that top tube and created a, an imaginary line from the center of your steer tube here straight across level to your seat post what distance that would be because that's the actual distance that your body is being pulled or compressed across the frame whereas the actual top tube length doesn't necessarily reflect that accurately on this bike, it's pretty darn close because I have a nice level top tube, but if it slopes, that changes a lot. The other thing that can affect this is going to be the angle of your, your seat tube. If you have a really slacked out seat tube, your effective top tube is going to be longer because that seat is gonna sit farther back. So again, to find effective top tube, you wanna go from the center of your uh, steer tube here straight across, nice and level, to the center of your seat post here. 
and that gives me 54 centimeters. And the reason this is so important is because this is gonna help you define what range of bikes, what size of bikes that you can fit on comfortably, how you can adjust your cockpit, how you can change up your saddle position, the type of seat post you use in order to make you the most comfortable, most powerful, quickest, longest riding rider out there. So that's why effective top tube is so important. That's how to find it. That's the difference between it and actual top tube length. And that's making you a smarter rider. This has been Seth with Jensen USA, your cycling experts.